Welcome to RGBA, where we cover the new gadgets, technology news, and discuss their impact on our lives with the occasional coffee and productivity discussion. This is episode number 22. My name is Alexandre vallier lagasse and I'm joined by my co-host, Tadir Menard. This week, we discuss pills for your Mac and a cord cutter's dream. <laughs> Let's start with a few news that was shared to us by uh, one of our listeners of the show, uh, GP Sirois, uh, on our Slack channel. So if you want to join us, uh, look under rgba.fm slash contact and join the Slack there, where we can share news and discuss about the news of the day. So he shared us a few links. Uh, the first one was the uh, DJI Mavic Pro, which is DJI's answer to the recent, recently announced uh, GoPro Karma, which is a drone that is foldable and can fit in a backpack but dji pushed that even further and now that little drone can actually f- like fold onto itself so small it's a, a, just like a bit bigger than your hands so it can fit in your bag or whatever as opposed to the karma which had like a special backpack but you could still at least bring it with you but this one the dji mavic pro is much 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 more compact and both are 4k drones and they have a bunch of features so there will be links in the show notes to look those up. The the GoPro one is pretty cool too. Yeah, that's the first one that was announced, I think maybe like a week ago or something like that. Yeah, and about I, a week ago. I've seen a video from uh, from Casey Neistat about that, where he, was, uh, he, he lives in New York, so he went uh, close to the river and he actually like filmed him, him himself with the drone from very far uh, he's skateboarding on the side while the drone is following him like from like i don't know maybe like half a mile or a mile away so it's pretty impressive and i'm i'm pretty sure um, people used to put gopros on a bunch of their own drones so it's just logical that gopro comes up with their own drone no yeah yeah it's basically like a natural evolution in the gadget world so another news uh, the ios 10 uh, imessage secure packs frenzy is still on and there's a bunch of very very original ideas uh, the latest one that was quite popular um, it's called phonies it's a sticker pack that allows you to stick chat bubbles on top of um, previous chat bubbles so you can let's say you can tell your friend to go screw himself then you wait for his response, and then you you just stick a sticker on top of your previous uh, message, and s- that says something super nice like "You are so wonderful." Instead of "Screw yourself," and this makes for funny discussions. But since the the sticker pack is imitating the chat bubbles, Apple was not too keen about that, and they pulled it. So, and the name was a little weird too. Phonies. Yeah, phonies. Yeah. <laughs> I saw I saw the news everywhere. Phonies, phonies. I was like, what? What is this? Wait, it's still there. If I click on it, I can still see it on the iTunes. Okay. Let's open it in iTunes just to be sure. Real time follow up. Oh, still there. Okay. So, was it pulled and then brought back? Because I've seen all week that this was pulled, but I can see it today. So probably that yeah okay it's back whatever (laughs) good for the developer on another iphone related news i remember a few years ago we had those jailbreak teams that were trying to find bugs and super smart ways to hack your iphone so they can jailbreak it and stuff nowadays these teams are less and less relevant what's more relevant is actually private bounties Uh, being raised by private companies to award a hacker or a team of hacker a prize in money to encourage them to actually uh, develop uh, backdoors, if you want, for iOS or Android 7. So now that Apple has its own bounty project and it's getting more popular and they have a lot more incentive in terms of dollars, a uh, bounty uh, bounty what do they call it? Exploit acquisition platform called Zero Dioim, uh, actually has raised uh, to 1.5 million the bounty for an iOS 10 and Android 7 hacks. 
So what they want is that people working on those things don't work on those once in once every year, but actually spend the whole year working on the 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 hacks so that there's always something up. And I'm guessing that the way that they make their money is they probably have some private companies that are investing because they either make jailbreak apps or they could also be like companies with bad intentions that are or security security companies or something that want to monitor certain phones. Yes, or perhaps a security company that wants to uh, help the FBI in future cases. Uh, with or just the FBI. Or just the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense too. <laughs> through a bunch of companies there, yeah. they funnel the money through yeah. so it doesn't get point back to the Sh- FBI, like in the movies. Yeah, shell companies from offshore or whatever. <laughs> exactly, exactly, like in the movies. That would be so cool. <laughs> yeah, so basically the bounty is now 1.5 million, so it can and it will probably attract a lot more hackers. And this will probably make an iOS 10 um, jailbreak available soon. Although I think I saw one go by a few weeks ago. Yeah, me too. I think I saw iPhone iOS 10 being jailbroken. Yeah, uh, but the guy said that he's not interested in releasing it. So probably he's waiting for either this bounty or Apple's bounty and see where he should submit his hack and get lots of money. <laughs> yeah, whoever gives the most money. Exactly. <laughs> This might also be this news. It's a company that have a jailbreak, and now they're setting up bounties of one point five million. So Apple turns around and set the bounty for one point seven million. Maybe they're trying to play a game or something. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna sell their hack to to, to the Apple. highest bidder. Yeah, and then yeah. they're gonna pay the the guy and they make money out of that. Yeah, that's yeah. quite possible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people are have that much. To, money to spare no because <laughs> what happens if really somebody has it what do you do yeah you have to pay it it's always a risk we heard uh well we, we actually added an apple tv update recently especially in the u.s where you can use your cable subscription to have access to special channels that are um that are available in your apple tv to watch tv content but there's one new app this week that is actually trying something quite different the CW channel, where you can see uh, recent series like Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, Supernatural, DC Legend of Tomorrow, The 100, uh, Vampire Diaries, and much more. They're trying something different. Instead of asking you to be a cable subscriber and giving you an app that you can use to uh, actually watch the content that you're paying for through your TV bill, they actually have this new app called the CW app, where there is no login, no subscription, and it's actually free. So it's basically TV on your Apple TV through an app with a back catalog of five weeks for no cost at all. But of course, there's ads. So it's like regular TV, but on demand for the last five weeks. Uh, the only special thing is that there's no back catalog. So if you want to watch like season one of Arrow, it's not available on that. You can only watch the previous five shows. So this is okay. something new, and I really like this. Uh, one pro- problem I have with all those new things that they try with the Apple TV is that you have to be a cable subscriber. It only works in the States for now, and I'm not interested in buying cable. I'm, I've am i been recorded for many years, so I don't want to go back for that. There are some little things that being, are being tried, like Vmedia in Canada trying to sell you a package for like 17 bucks per month to have access to a bunch Just of the channels. basic channels. Yeah, like something like 20 channels or something. Which is nice, but it's not everything I would like if I were to start paying again. So, but this, this is like a trailblazer that they, they're trying something very new. And it's also not just for Apple TV, by the way, it's Roku, Chromecast, uh, Xbox, Amazon Fire TV, and Android. So, they're, anyways, I'm pretty excited for that. It's the first one too, but uh, the five episodes is weird. Just five episodes behind. Well, yeah, it's weird, I- but, but, to limit the bandwidth, I guess, so people just don't binge watch the whole series like they do on Netflix. Well, I'm thinking that it's probably because of the advertisers. You know, in the podcast world and many other worlds, they are interested in the last 30 days of your viewership. Right. It has to be relevant. Yeah, so what happens if there's a Super Bowl ad, but the Super Bowl is already passed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It I makes no sense for them to pay for that. So by kind of boxing that for five weeks or 
plus minus one week, uh, it makes sense that they can have relevant ads and relevant rates, especially for, for CW. Right. Imagine if that takes off and that is super popular and they actually have more people watching because they can, it's, it's no login, of course, but they know how many times each show is being watched. So imagine if this gets more popular than the actual TV channel. That would be like be cool. bad. Bad. Why not? It would be a revolution. <laughs> it, no, yeah, it'd be bad for the industry. Like, oops, what, what have we been doing doing here? Well, I think good for us. Good for us, but good for the industry. They have to adapt, and this might be like the first player who actually makes this smart move. The CW. And, we don't get that one here in Canada. I think we get the shows. Well, we do get the shows, but they're under a different brand or something. Yeah, I think they're on global, most of them. But they're not necessarily on the same channel. But still, uh, I do we get this app? I hope so. I, oh, I don't think so. I think it's going to be, all the ads are going to be local to the United States. So they won't be able to put, bring it here. Yeah, we don't have it. Unavailable in Canada. Okay. So let me rephrase that. CW sucks. <laughs> 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 yeah so yeah it's just us us only uh, and it probably will stay like that because if cw sold the rights to their shows to global or whatever they won't be able to have the app online for everybody in the world no we don't we never get those things yeah i was too excited for nothing <laughs> now i'm just depressed you have to stick with v media or whatever the company there that makes the super skinny package that they call yeah, that's our only choice. And I'm not even sure they have CW on there because I'm a big fan of all most of these shows. So, no, I don't have CW, but I, I watch The Flash and Arrow and I have DC. We all have them on Canadian network TV. I don't know. Yeah, but I just global. hope. I think it's global or CTV. Okay. Yeah. Which is probably part of the package from V Media. Yeah. Yeah. It's all part of the basic package. All right. So on the iPhone side of things, uh, the iPhone 7 being fairly new, we still have some little problems with it. Uh, we saw uh, reports of BMW owners having Bluetooth issues with the with the phone, uh, with iOS 10.0.2, and the Verizon users having LTE problems. So nothing major, I would say. It's not everyone. Uh, it will probably yeah, be... The Bluetooth problem is connection problems, and... The Verizon problem is they keep falling back on 3G, I think. Okay. Do you have Bluetooth in your car? No. No? No, I don't have. I have a cassette player in my car. Wow. <laughs> that technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have Bluetooth and I realized something new with iOS 10. Um, you know when you listen to your car, uh, let's say a podcast on Overcast, and you get out of your car for a while and then you come back, it would not necessarily remember that the playing content was overcast. And when you were starting your car, it would start to play like a random song from Apple Music. But now with iOS 10, it kind of tries harder because you see there's a big like few seconds delay, but then it starts the podcast. Or sometimes if it doesn't do nothing, I just press play a second time. And it, it, it seems like it's thinking because it takes like a two or three seconds and then it starts playing the podcast. So it does something to work harder and remember what you were playing and actually resumes that. So that's pretty cool. So it's probably something new with iOS 10 and the way the Bluetooth connectivity and the, the, the now playing uh, Ozio is going to be resumed more easily. Yeah, I have the same thing. It's kind of weird. It's sometimes it starts a song, which I have none of on my phone, and sometimes it starts the overcast. So it's like half half. I yeah. have the same problem with the Bluetooth, just earphones, okay. headphones. Okay. But it should be like more reliable now. So play with that and see if it really is better or, or not. Uh, continuing with iPhone 7, we have the adoption uh, percentage it's not as good as ios 9 but it's still pretty good it's up to 48 percent. i think ios 9 at this point was 52 or something like that okay so it's still not like perfect but it's quite it's good pretty close it's a pretty much the same thing for what like for two weeks uh yeah yeah for two weeks not bad two, three weeks three weeks three weeks okay 
yeah, three weeks, 50% almost. I don't know. I can't count. <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly. A couple of weeks. Yeah, so, cool. So, that that's nice. Uh, easier for developers also. Yeah, since there's a couple of new features in iOS 10 that d developers can require. So, yeah. that makes it better for everybody. We're going to include the show notes a little graph from Mixpanel with the trends. So, you can see where the lines crossed. On a iOS developer side of things, Omni Group has changed the way that they're going to sell their apps. Uh, if you don't know Omni Group, they make a bunch of apps like Omni Focus, Omni Graphful, Omni Outliner, Omni Plan, and Omni Presence, which are all iOS and Mac apps. Uh, they are usually expensive, I would say, but they are also like super supported and constantly updated. And every year, there's one, if not two, major release with lots of new features. They also embrace the Apple Watch a lot, and they're kind of like a, one of the best developers on the uh, Apple ecosystem. So yeah, they're in, they're really old too. Yeah, they're not old, but they're <laughs> like uh, one of the first, I think. Yeah, one of the first, and they've been around. Yeah, so they have tried different things in the past. They're trying to uh, do rebates on their apps. They're trying to uh, make bundles. Uh, if you buy one app, you can get the second one for cheaper because you can complete your bundle on iOS and stuff like that. But now what they're trying is they actually all their apps are now free. And you kind of have like a, a trial period if you want. And then you can buy an in-app purchase to get all the features. And I'm thinking that this in-app purchase is recurring, right? Do they say that? Uh, yeah, I think it's a subscription. Okay, so, so you're gonna have to, you're gonna be able to, they're gonna be able to get, I think it's eighty percent of the money after a year. Yeah, exactly. So given that this is one of the key players in the app ecosystem, it makes sense. Uh, they are a very reliable developer that are maintaining their apps and they want to stay in business. They are a business, so there's many employees, many developers on, in that company. So it's kind of like natural evolution, and it makes total sense for them. That Yeah, and it's going to get a lot of people in the door, because I wanted to try OmniFocus, but it's 55 bucks for the Mac, so I was gonna, kind of holding off. Yeah, but they have a trial, no? Uh, maybe through, maybe not on the phone. Yeah, but that's they the thing. They trials on the phone, I, but they can do trials on the Mac. I tried the same thing in the past. I wanted to try them, but... Yes, you get the trial on the Mac, but on iOS you could not try. And most of my right. like task management workflows workflow, or whatever are all on the phone. Yeah, so it's like not really trying it forever for real. But now it's 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 going to be possible to test it properly. Yeah, because if you look at Ani Grapple, it's 139 in Canada. Wow, for the app. Yeah, it's uh, expensive. Yes, but it's also probably one of the leader in the. In terms of graphic, uh, sketch, or not sketch, but the, uh, what do you call that? I only have graphic design or? Not graphic, but um, schema design or plan design or workflows design. I only have, uh, I only have. Charts. Yeah, charts. Char not charts and um, uh, only have flow the, charts. Yeah, flow charts, yeah. I only had a Ordinogram in my head, which was the <laughs> what we learned yeah, at school. Yeah, <laughs> UML there, I think. UML yeah, things. Yeah, UML things, yeah. All right, uh, one last uh, little news, uh, Kickstarter campaign. Uh, the autonomous company, which is makers of a stand-up desk that I've, well, I've exchanged with you a lot in the past, that this is kind of like the cheapest desk you can get, but it has like a big uh, shipping cost. They actually tried something new. They released the Lambda chair on Kickstarter. So basically, it's an ergonomic chair with a bunch of adjustments like you find on any high-end uh, office chair, but this one has a special feature, which is the price. Uh, the, if you were an early backer, you can get the chair for 200 bucks, so which is equivalent of a more than $1,000 chair normally. So it was quite interesting. And now that all the early, early, uh, early birds are gone, you can get it for 249, which is still quite reasonable. And you got a bunch of colors, and there's also one special feature in the chair. You know when, after sitting for a while, you just want to lean forward naturally, but then that's bad for your back? So the most chairs offer lumbar support, so you can stay straight, but nobody wants to stay straight. 
So eventually you just lean forward. Uh, they have a switch on the back that when you toggle, the chair actually comes closer to your back to actually like embrace your back if you want. <laughs> so <laughs> to, to give you like a support from the headrest all the way to the, the lower back. So this is something original. They have patented it. So it's something that they're trying uh, this time around. And it looking at the little video, it, it looks interesting. So, and for the price, you get the, the, the rest of the adjustments you were expecting, the height, the, the depth, the uh, uh, elbow rest, everything. So it's, it's, it seems like a pretty decent chair. And there's also something you're going to like. Uh, they have a combo uh, you can get for, how much is that? I think it's a thousand bucks. The chair and the desk? Yeah, the chair and the desk. Because you should be working standing up anyways. Yeah. Sitting down is so like 2015. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, standing up is more like 2012 or whatever. Yeah, you're right. Oh, old technology. <laughs> yeah. The new thing is standing up. Yeah, but this one is actually a marriage of two things that you like. Standing up and having a wooden desk made from a wood slab. So Yeah, but this, this one looks flat. Yeah, it looks flat. Instead of... Uh, providing you with a naturally unequal side r where you stand, they actually do the opposite. The front and the sides are straight, but the back side, the one facing the wall, is actually uh, like crooked and naturally curved. Yeah, it's the f one. Yeah, <laughs> you have to beat that. <laughs> but still, it looks nice. And uh, for a thousand bucks for a chair and an, a standing desk that is electronic with the uh, memory positions so you can easily go from standing to sitting uh, by the press of a button it's actually quite nice so that's it for kickstarter and now we're moving on to the rumor mail oh no sorry there's one more news so blackberry announced that their phones <laughs> are no more <laughs> so yeah uh, they're stepping down from making blackberry phones so they're still in the OS business, I guess. Uh, maybe using Android phones, they're going to make an Android version of the OS. I'm not sure where they're going with that, but basically, they're not making devices anymore. The first thing I thought when I saw the news was BlackBerry still makes phone? Yeah, well... The, I stopped they start. I, 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 I thought they, they, had like, they stopped making phones. I think they only have like two or three models left. So it's basically the classic... Which is oh, the, the passport? Yeah, yeah. The passport was the latest one, which is more like close to a square than a rectangle. So it's wider. Uh, still has the keyboard, physical keyboard, and uh, they have the classic, which is the regular run of the mill ninety something series, uh, BlackBerry, small curve, small screen, and I think they also have another one that was full screen and virtual keyboard. Not too sure, but these are like the the latest models I've seen. The, come out over the last years but the classic but going from like i don't know maybe five to ten models a year down to two three you can see that the trend is going down so announcing this week that they're actually closing that business part of their business that makes sense it sucks because it's a canadian company yes yes but as things goes with some companies when you have two different people uh, heading, uh, heading, uh, leading a company, uh, there tend to be clashes, and most of the times, nothing happens in the businesses where there's clash. They just don't want to, like, I don't know, the one, the one like to clash two more. So they just like say, okay, instead of doing A or B, we're gonna do nothing and just coast. But coasting for too long on a previous success makes that they eventually get down to number two number three, and then down the line, and eventually they're unrelevant. Because they were number one, or pretty close, no? They were number one for many years. Uh, I remember just before... In North America, maybe, but not worldwide, since uh, they never really worked in Europe, the Blackberries. Uh, except in UK. In UK, uh, they were targeting kids with the keyboard and the special texting plans, and yeah. they, they were... BBM. Yeah, BBM, and they were still very strong, even in the last few years. I think it's just like maybe in the last two or three years that they they kind of lost the ball there too. But uh, for longer than we, I thought, when it was basically dead everywhere, it was still very strong in the UK with the kids. 
So. And the, the the passport they're signing they're trying to sell a wider world. Don't limit yourself to now a world of today's phones. And they have a, an iPhone and a, the BlackBerry passport with like this X-ray of somebody's chest. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Yeah, well, they they try weird things BlackBerry sometimes. But they're sticking to that keyboard. Yeah, well, that's their signature product, so they can't drop it. And when they tried to drop it a few years back with just like touch screens, they, they received a backlash. And so they brought it back. That's when they brought back the, the Blackberry the classic, classic. Yeah. Just to respond to those uh, criticism. It's exactly the same phone as 2006 and 2004. Yeah. With just maybe a better CPU and stuff like that, but not more than that. Now back to the Apple side of things. Uh, Apple now released the search ads. Remember when they did their event, they were talking about uh, implementing search ads in the iTunes App Store. So when you were looking for something, you could have uh, search ads or promoted ads coming up uh, in your search results. Well, this will be going live on October 5. And everybody who subscribes right now, well, they say eligible developers, so I'm guessing... Not everyone, but most of the people will get a hundred dollar credit toward their first campaign when they sign up. So that's nice. I signed up, but I don't see any credit on my account. So probably it's maybe again just a US thing. Did, did you ever see any ads? I don't think I've seen any nope. in Canada yet. Never, no, right? never. So it's, all I've seen is screenshots of people online. Yeah, no, never. And if I search for something like, uh, I don't know, like emoji, Twitter, something very. Trendy. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, it's probably like Twitter. They, they, they do a bunch of ad stuff, but only in the US. So we'll have to see how this goes. Hopefully, uh, looking at the forms when you create a campaign, I can see that you have to specify keywords and you can specify like with any ad platforms, your uh, the metric of your uh, the population you want to reach. So age group, uh, countries, cities, um, stuff like that. So you can you have the tools to make a great campaign. And the keyword part is kind of where Apple will probably will agree or not. Uh, if you want to promote, let's say, a Twitter app and you target words like Pinterest and stuff like that, they're going to refuse your campaign because you're trying to target uh, copyrighted words from another company. Right. So that's where the difference is with other ad platforms. So RGB would not be RGB without some rumors. Uh, we have a report from Min Chikuo, our favorite KGI securities analyst from Asia, that reports that the next iPhone models will actually be made of stainless steel instead of aluminum. Uh, you can see right away that stainless steel is stronger than aluminum, so it's better for that. It's also better uh, in terms of corrosion resistance. Not that I have ever seen a rusted iPhone, have you? No, not <laughs> yet. Uh, yeah, and I'm guessing that the jet black we currently have will probably not be very uh, corroded. So thanks to the finish that Apple is making. The only downside to switching to stainless steel accuracy is that the, the aluminum is used for heat dissipation. So basically on your iPhone, the the case itself can be used as a heat dissipator. So the heat uh, cranked out by the CPU can be absorbed by the case and released like that. But if you use a stainless steel case, that's not possible because stainless steel is not providing you with the same heat dissipation properties. So if your CPU is getting hotter, it will stay hotter in its little casing. So it tend to be harder to to control the heat in that situation. They also talked that there might be some curved OLED displays. Uh, we've seen also reports that uh, Apple is talking with LGs about uh, OLED displays. Seems to be the natural evolution. But yeah, so it's still rumors. So nothing else on the front. We also have an late October launch of redesigned MacBook Pros. Can you talk, uh, can you tell us more about this? We're guessing it's going to be what we're saying. You're saying you're predicting a, uh, October 18th. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. 
it's close to the end of the month, but not quite. So I, I guess we're going to see the famous OLED bar we've been seeing in all the rumors this summer yep. on the new Macs. We're guessing they're going to renew the Mac Pros. Mm-hmm. Not the maybe the Mac. Well, I hope they're going to renew the Mac Pros. It's been a thousand days. Uh, the MacBook Pros as well, and maybe also the MacBook One. Yeah, they're or the Mac to, Mac to, MacBook but adorable. Yeah, <laughs> there are also rumors of that Apple would be switching to the Polaris uh, graphic chips from AMD for the 15-inch uh, MacBook Pros. So if they they have new chips for the MacBook Pros, I'm hoping they have got going to get new graphic cards for the Mac Pro too. So it's time for a refresh. Oh, and maybe also uh, Thunderbolt displays or Retina displays, whatever they're going to call them. Yep. Because they discontinued the Apple Thunderbolt. So I'm guessing they're going to release something to go with the new Mac Pros. Yes, yes. I really hope I'm going to see new, new screens for that. Yeah, even though they're going to be way too expensive and I'm not going to buy one, but I still <laughs> want one. <laughs> yeah, just just to see it uh, in person and uh, let's hope for uh, for Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, Santa Claus is not uh, is not shipping Thunderbolt displays this way. No, you're sure. So, oh. No, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> so now that we're done with rumors, let's talk about a few apps. Uh, the first one is called Amphetamine. So that's what I meant when I said earlier, uh, pills for your Mac. You probably already know about Caffeine, which is a small menu bar app that prevents your Mac from going to sleep. Uh, so. When caffeine isn't enough, you can turn off, turn up to amphetamine to, <laughs> to stay awake. So it's the same thing with uh, this Mac software. It's basically the same kind of app, but with a lot more control. You can tell it not to go to sleep when certain apps are activated or not. And there's like a, there's a bunch of uh, of uh, of uh, settings like uh, scheduling. Uh, uh, you can also uh, activate activate with the click on the menu bar. And there's a bunch of more. Uh, Apple script support and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's still free. So there's no, there's no in-app purchase or advertisement. Uh, I don't know for how long, but the app is free for now. The links will be in the show notes. And similar to that, um, we all know about Flux. We all know about Night Shift. Uh, there's another app that does something similar, which is called Lumen. But instead of switching uh, the, the, the brightness or the color, depending on the day of the, the, uh, the hour of the day, or it actually uses the color of the app you're using to switch the brightness. So, for example, it probably happened to you a while, uh, many times in the past. If you're using Terminal and it's a dark background app, you crank up the brightness to see the text. But then if you switch back to the Finder, which is completely white. Super white. Yeah, this is actually like knives in your eyes. <laughs> when it's late at, at night so <laughs> it's kind of uh, yeah it hurts <laughs> so basically this app will actually change the brightness um, depending on the app so if you go from a dark back, black to a bright white they're gonna crank down the brightness but the cool thing is that it's also learning so let's say that I'm in Finder and my eyes are hurting so I manually crank down the brightness it's going to learn that, okay, for this app or this color of the screen, let's say white, uh, the user goes four levels down. And then when he goes back to uh, a terminal, it brings it back to the regular level. So this is pretty cool. This is also in a free app. You can see the source code on GitHub if you want to dive in the code. And there's you can also install it using Homebrew. So it's a single command in the terminal and it's going to be installed. The next app we have in the app corner is PaySpot. So it's um, a clipboard manager. There's a couple of these. I think PaySpot used to be a shared clipboard clipboard manager between the iPhone and the Mac, right? Yep, exactly. But now that's kind of useless because it's um, built in to iOS. Mm -hmm. But the clipboard manager lets you create uh, custom pasteboards for frequently used clippings. It I think you can also search previous a bunch of previous stuff that you copied to the clipboard. So it's like a clipboard history. That could be kind of useful. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's in beta. So you have to download the beta. And it's by our friends at TapBots that make the TweetBot and CalBot 
and all the, that's pretty all much the bots. It. All the bots. They make <laughs> all the bots. Yep. And the last app, it's actually my app. I released a sticker pack for iMessage uh, just for fun. It's a Rage comic sticker pack. The links will be in the show notes. You can get like 29 Rage stickers to can, that you can send your friends. And I'm also building a feature request uh, site where you can actually request uh, and vote for new Rage comics uh, stickers to be added. So I'm in the process of doing that. Uh, so yeah, just go download it and share it with your friends. So that's it for this week. Uh, you can go follow us on all the social networks. We're available on, on a bunch of podcast directories too. I think you've been adding us everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. I'm trying. Literally everywhere. Yep. So in your app of choice. And that's it for this week. All right. Have a nice week. <laughs>